Bernie Sanders won the New Hampshire primary, making him the clear frontrunner for the Democratic nomination, as President Trump bullied the Justice Department into going easy on one of his convicted henchmen. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. There were two huge developments happening simultaneously on split screens last night. On the one hand, a crisis in the Justice Department created by President Trump, and on the other, the Democratic primary in New Hampshire. And we all had to do our best to follow both at the same time, which is just how our lives are now. We're like bank security guards watching five different screens at once. On one screen, there's a bunch of customers waiting patiently in line to complain about how they're being ripped off. And on the other, four, there are dudes staring directly into the camera, smiling and holding giant bags of cash. <laughs> First, Democrats held their second contest of the primary season in New Hampshire last night. And whatever else you could say about it, it was honestly just a relief to move on from the mess in Iowa, where the final results were screwed up by mathematical errors and an app that crashed that was made by a company called Shadow. In fact, the final results are still not confirmed. A hundred years from now, after hordes of zombies supercharged by climate change have ravaged the country, a lone survivor will wander into an abandoned barn in Iowa and find a note carved into the wall that says, still too close to call. <laughs> Honestly, it was just a relief to finally see people voting in actual polling stations as opposed to whatever the hell was going on in Iowa. <laughs> I'm sorry, but this is not an election. These people look like the burnout kids who had to sit out of volleyball because they purposely forgot their gym clothes. <laughs> sorry, coach. We're so bummed we can't learn how to bump, set, and spike. <laughs> the only thing we spike is heroin, coach! I'm sorry, I yelled at you, coach. <laughs> Basically, what we know about Iowa is that Bernie Sanders won the popular vote. Pete Buttigieg slightly edged him out in the delegates, thanks to obscure rules. And Elizabeth Warren came in third. And the Iowa Democratic Party is having trouble keeping things together. In some cases, together literally. The chair of the Iowa party held a press conference on Monday to update the media on the results, and this happened. The sheets are signed not only by the precinct chair and the precinct secretary, uh, oh, man, did you, did you use an app for your podium as well? <laughs> Was the app called Metaphor? <laughs> and you can tell. You can tell that we had moved on from Iowa to New Hampshire because it seemed like virtually every candidate showed up to greet their supporters with the local delicacy boxes of Dunkin' Donuts. And, <laughs> That includes Senator Amy Klobuchar, who repeatedly bragged about how many Duncan locations she'd been to. What are you going to do to solidify your place at, in the top three? Uh, well, Joy, we're doing it right now. Uh, I go everywhere. I've been at Dunkin' Donuts. I've gone to Dunkin' Donuts, and it feels like, for me, that it's a fresh start here. Um, I got to go to every Dunkin' Donut I could find. <laughs> And that's no small feat. I'm from New Hampshire, and as I recall, every third building is legally required to contain a Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> Although I have to say, when your big highlight about visiting New Hampshire is that you got to go to every Dunkin' Donut, you definitely sound like an out-of-towner. That's like going to New York and saying, we really got to experience the culture. We went to all the Dwayne Reeds. <laughs> but hey, the strategy clearly worked for Klobuchar because she finished in a strong third with 20% of the vote. And while Andrew Yang dropping out means the remaining Democratic field is all white, it's pretty amazing that the top three finishers in New Hampshire were a Jewish Democratic Socialist, a gay veteran, and a woman from Minnesota whose next coffee is probably free. <laughs> but the big takeaway... The big takeaway, of course, was that Bernie Sanders is now the clear frontrunner for the Democratic nomination with his win in New Hampshire and his current lead in many national polls. And you can tell that he senses his place as a frontrunner because in New Hampshire, he started aiming his fire squarely at Donald Trump. We are going to defeat the most dangerous president in the modern history of America, Donald Trump. The American people, no matter what their political views may be, are sick and tired of a president who is a pathological liar, who is running a corrupt administration, who is a bully and a vindictive person, who is a racist, a sexist, a xenophobe, a homophobe and a religious bigot. 
and those are his nice qualities. Damn! I mean, I gotta say, I was always a fan of gruff Bernie, but I like insult comic Bernie even more. You can catch that and more in his new Netflix special, Ya Burnt. <laughs> and Trump's actions this week have shown that the stakes of the Democratic race could not be higher. Now that Republicans, with the exception of Mitt Romney, have acquitted Trump in the impeachment trial, the 2020 election is really the last chance we have to stop our system from fully sliding into a corrupt banana republic. Republicans have given Trump the green light to subvert our democracy and the rule of law without consequences, and now he's pushing full steam ahead. He's literally bullying the Justice Department via tweet to dole out lenient sentences to the cronies who committed crimes on his behalf. Every time I think Trump has done the worst thing he could possibly do, he finds a way to one-up himself. He's like the exact opposite of Simone Biles. Like, every time you think she can't stun you with a new routine, she posts a video of herself doing something like this. Yeah. I mean, it's fun to imagine Trump attempting even one part of that routine. I, you know, I imagine it would look like this. Witch hunt. We had like 15 people working all day on that. <laughs> 100% first time I've seen it. <laughs> Republican senators tried to tell us that impeachment would be a teachable moment for Trump, but Trump made it clear that wasn't the case. He was basically an inmate at a parole hearing, and when they asked him, so what are your plans when you get out, he said, uh, I'd like to kill again. Last night, we saw how little Trump has changed with the case of one of his longtime confidants and convicted criminal, Roger Stone, seen here in his very real outfit from the inauguration. I mean, look at him. Is he attending the inauguration or Mr. Peanut's funeral? <laughs> He's dressed like Punxsutawney Phil's Coke dealer. Good news, Phil, baby. Six more weeks of winter, and it's the good snow, baby. Stone. Stone was convicted of lying to Congress and witness tampering, both actions intended to help Trump during Robert Mueller's Russia investigation. You might remember that Stone even tried to intimidate one witness by threatening to steal that witness's therapy dog. Stone wrote in an email, you're a rat, a stoolie, you backstab your friends, run your mouth, my lawyers are dying to rip you to shreds. Stone also said he would take that dog away from you. That's right, he threatened to take someone's therapy dog. Even Spirit Airlines doesn't do that. And they don't even have cushions. <laughs> so on Monday, prosecutors recommended up to nine years in jail for Stone. And then in the middle of the night, Trump lashed out at that sentence on Twitter, writing, this is a horrible and very unfair situation. The real crimes were on the other side as nothing happens to them. Cannot allow this miscarriage of justice. He lied to Congress, tampered with witnesses, and threatened to steal someone's dog. Dog napping alone should get you jail time, and you should have to serve those years in a dog pound. And then out of nowhere, in a shocking move, the Justice Department, led by Trump's co-conspirator and Attorney General Bill Barr, announced on Tuesday they were changing the sentencing recommendation after Trump's tweet, prompting all four prosecutors working on the case to withdraw in protest. Barr is turning the Justice Department into a political weapon for Trump, and when Trump was asked about the move yesterday, he insisted both that he hadn't directed the Justice Department to go easy on Stone, and also that he had the absolute right to do it if he had wanted to. You seem from your tweet today that you were upset about the yeah, I thought it was ridiculous that, that of that. No, I didn't speak to the just. I'd be able to do it if I wanted. I have the absolute right to do it. Uh, I stay out of things uh, to a degree that people wouldn't believe. No, we wouldn't. We wouldn't believe it. You don't stay out of anything. You couldn't even stay out of Robert Pattinson's and Kristen Stewart's relationship. You're like the guy at a party who walks up to a couple that are clearly fighting and says, so who cheated on who? Karen, I didn't know you had it in you. <laughs> also, this is not the first time Trump has insisted he has the absolute right to direct the Justice Department to do his political bidding or the absolute right to do a bunch of other obviously unconstitutional stuff. He tweeted, as the President of the United States, I have an absolute right, perhaps even a duty, to investigate or have investigated corruption, and that would include asking or suggesting other countries to help us out. Quote, I never offered pardons to Homeland Security officials, never ordered anyone to close the southern border, although I have the absolute right to do so. The president tweeting that sharing intelligence with Russia is something he has the absolute right to do. He told the New York Times tonight, 
I have the absolute right to do what I want to do with the Justice Department. No, you don't. You don't have the absolute right to do any of that stuff. Also, anytime you use the phrase, I have the absolute right, you're not the good guy in that situation. Trump sounds like an angry customer yelling at a Dunkin's because they wouldn't let him use the bathroom. <laughs> I have the absolute right to use the bathroom. <laughs> you gotta buy something or get out. Besides, Amy Klobuchar is still in there canvassing for votes. <laughs> Somebody's in here! Somebody undecided? So in the last 24 hours, we've learned that Bernie Sanders is now the front-runner for the Democratic nomination, promising to fundamentally transform the corrupt system that created Trump and from which Trump benefits. Meanwhile, Trump is stoking a constitutional crisis at the Justice Department by interfering in criminal cases, protecting his cronies, retaliating against his enemies, using the government as a political weapon, talking like a thug and a dictator. And those are his nice qualities. This has been a closer look.